morning you guys today i'm going to service um a carburetor for a suzuki sj410 uh it's a thousand cc little engine and it's a small little side drive cob i'll show you guys now so that's the carby came to me in pieces it's a little side draft carby bolts on like that i'm not quite sure what goes on here i have no idea it's got an electric solenoid um, anti-dieseling device flow chamber choke on this side and the throttle mechanism sits over there and the accelerator pump and everything is at the bottom so i'll take it apart clean it up um, as i do it just record some bits and pieces i mean it came apart so and it's half apart already but i've managed to find a kit for it made by keiser in japan there's a couple of gaskets in there and a little clip or two but i think the most important thing is because the gaskets we can make is not a problem is you get the two little diaphragms for the accelerator pump in the mud in, in the bottom of the carby and the needle and seat and bits and pieces so uh, we'll see let's strip it and see how it goes so this is the rest of the stuff that was in that plastic bag there's two carb tops which is cool um, they look the same no problem. i'm not quite sure what where that goes i think this holds the cable for the choke we'll figure it out this is a little plate that goes on top of the carby and a little float and the float pin but we'll clean all of this up and then we'll start assembly and um I want to make an adapter so that I can actually test these. Um, but yeah, let's get it cleaned up first. So as with any job, you need to have a tub where you put all your screws and bits and pieces in. So when you're done, you know the tub must be empty. I'm not sure it's going to be the case here. But um, anyway, it is what it is. So I want to take this off. You see this is adjustable which is quite cool i want to take this off and um, see what what it looks like inside there i noticed a lot of corrosion there inside on the main jet so i'll take that side bolt off as well and just see what i can do there whenever you take something apart that you haven't done before or you don't do regularly uh, it's a good idea to take pictures of it um, I sometimes go back and watch my own videos just to remember what goes where and which way around and so on and so forth if it's been taken apart before um, then it's a little bit more tricky then you've got to go to the, to the if you can find a manual I've got quite a few manuals go find a manual and then just check on the manual where it goes let's see what this looks like inside you must never force anything if you can break things off that you don't want to be broken off yeah this hasn't been off in a while although it seems to work still i'm gonna have to get that off with no it's coming There we go. It's got a little spring below it to push it back. Ooh, that doesn't want to come off. I'll have to find a way to pry it. I think I'm going to soak it first before I force force that. I don't want to. I don't want to damage anything. So this eventually came off and you can see why it was stuck this was standing with old fuel or water or something for a long time um, and it also has a little spring behind it you see there so uh, fortunately we do have the two new little diaphragms in the carby Oh, this is a little power valve system. 
Look at that. Look at all that gunk. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll soak it and clean it up. So the main circuit for the Scarby delivers fuel through the auxiliary venturi, which is, which is over there. The air goes through there and the air speeds up through that little brass bit in the middle. That, that looks similar to a little emulsion tube. That's what draws the fuel through. There's a screw on the side over there. I don't know if you can see it. That holds it in place from a screw on the side here. And then your air screw, uh, air correction screw, air correction jet, sorry, is that one there. And then your main jet sits down the bottom there. You remove it through that hole. As you can't see, but I've already done that. So I'll remove that jet. I don't know if I want to remove the auxiliary venturi. If I can get everything clean and sprayed through with car cleaner, I'm not going to remove it. Um, but we'll take it from there. Then at the bottom, I'm going to have to make a special tool to remove that. I don't have one. Um, that little plunger. I see the new one is in the kit, so I definitely want to clean it. But first, I'm gonna I'm gonna soak the scarby and get it cleaned. I'm not gonna remove all the brackets and stuff; they're in place. I'm not gonna remove the main shaft. All of that looks fine. There's no wear and tear on it. And then I must also find a way to remove the air mixture screw, idle air mixture screw. So there's this brass cap. When you remove the brass cap, this jet comes out of there, that's your idle jet, you do get a new one in the kit and then next door to it, over there, that's the air correction like that um, you also get a new one in the kit, it looks terrible eh? Your next I've got to remove this I couldn't get anything on the end, so I took this little long nose pliers of mine and I managed to grip it there and turn it out that way and the jet came out like that and then I think it's a quite a bad idea that the spring sits in front of it um, anyway which can rust and what have you so but I've managed to get it out fortunately apologies fortunately you did get a new one in the kit so so far so good so, uh, I've cleaned the carby, I had it lying in, in, in solvent for, I don't know, maybe half an hour or, or, or even more. Then I brushed it down and put it back in the solvent and then I had it in a slight acid, um, just to clear out all the channels. But in between, every time I would blow it with my compressed air, so we know all the channels are open. And when I was done with all of that, I sprayed it with good old carb cleaner. To make all, sure all the channels and everything is open, so you know you you, you never know 100%, but yeah, it, it it is what it is. So let's start assembly. So first thing we're gonna, I think we must start at the bottom here. Yeah? First first thing we're gonna do is gonna put that little plunger in. I'm not gonna record how I struggle to get this in and screw it in, but you get the idea. So to take it up, to, to unscrew it, I didn't make a special screwdriver. I simply took it apart. And when you take it apart, it looks like that. And I could get a normal screwdriver in there and screw it out. And to screw it in, I used this little screwdriver on the side there. Screwed it in all the way. And when it was in, I simply held that there. And I just tapped it lightly with a small hammer to know that it's perfectly in place. Usually when I assemble these things, I don't know how long they're going to lie before the client puts it on the car. I just like to put a little bit of lubricant on there. So the next thing we have to do is to put this little diaphragm in. But before we do that, we need to put all the other bits and pieces in. And that little pump jet, like you get a new one in the kit. I'm not quite sure if it's the same as the old one. It does look the same. 
I'm going to put that in. That goes in there. Like that. And then we have to put this little non-return valve in. Um, when I first came across it, I thought it had screw thread on it, um, but it didn't. You just simply just pull it out. I see there's thread on the inside. So I'm assuming you would get something that screws in there to pull it out, but I pulled it out. I'm just going to put a new o-ring on it and then put it back in its place. You do get the new o-ring with the kit. It's that little one there. Um, I'm not going to record how I put it on. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll just whack it on quickly. So I've screwed that in and just to tighten it because I don't have a special screwdriver I held it like that and I just tapped it with a, a little hammer like that and the other direction just to make sure that it was tight and um, now we can start assembly that flat brass bit must squeeze against the little plunger so that means that goes on that way around like that then the spring goes in. There's two springs, this spring and the other spring. Don't confuse the two because the tension is different. And this has got to go on. Like that. You just got to make sure that you that squeeze the spring. And that they're in the right place. And then you carry on for the next diaphragm. And the next spring and the next assembly. I'm going to try it with, without the screws, so bear with me, the next must be that spring, I've cleaned it up big time, I don't know if I'm going to actually achieve this alone, and the next that's got to go, that's got to go on, like that, I just want to make sure I've got it in the middle there, nope, there we go, It's forever pushing back. And then I've got to get this on in the right position. There we go. And you put the screws in, like that. Next I want to put this little lever on, um, and a little bit of grease always helps. And then we tighten that up, and that's done. That it's worn quite a bit and it also looks like it's bent a little bit see how worn it is I do not have a replacement for that make that nice and tight but it'll work I might bend this back a little bit so that it pushes better over there because you throttle a little bit and it doesn't push I'll also adjust these springs a little bit just to make up that play but that's not too serious we'll get that sorted I'm also going to put fuel in a float bowl once I've put the main jet in the side I'm going to put fuel in there once I've got the main jet and that side bolt in just to make sure that the accelerator pump works I think I must do that next so I put the main jet in um, I didn't record how I did it, um, but I can explain. The groove on the new main jet was smaller. So my screwdriver fitted quite snug on it like that. And, and what I did then is I held the carby like that in my hand and literally just pushed it over and screwed it in. Sorry, like that. Balanced it, screwed it in like that. 
um, it would, wasn't easy to record, so I didn't do that. So I'm going to put the main cap on now, and then put fuel in and test the accelerator pump. So I've put the carby in the vise, just to hold it for me, and I've put fuel in the float bowl, and I've primed it a bit. And um, accelerator pump, look how beautiful it sprays. See there? Wow. So that works nice. I've had to make some adjustments on the other side, I'll show you in a sec. So there was too much play here for my liking. And that wasn't pressing properly on the pin. So I've bent it a little bit. Put it in the vise and I've bent it a little bit. And then I put a washer behind there and screwed it back in. But then the washer was too, too big. So I took the bolt out again, put it in a lathe, cut it down a little bit just over there. Put it back and now it's sweet as a nut. It works um, beautiful and there's no play. So, good. So when I looked in the packet, I thought that there was a spare air correction jet, but there, there wasn't. Um, I think I've mistaken it for either that um, mixture screw or the idle, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to clean that up and put it in. Um, I'll be back in a few seconds. So whenever you clean something like this, good old carb cleaner, and spray it and you can see how it actually works. <laughs> and you can be sure that all those little holes are open. It looks cool, eh? Just messing on my workbench now. So that just screws in. I've had to use a smaller screwdriver, because my usual one doesn't fit there. And then that gets a cap that goes on there. And that's done. Make sure to not damage that because that locks on a taper. And that's got to seal fairly airtight. Next I'll just put that little cap on. Make sure the screws are clean. And then we can do the float level. Next I want to do the float bowl and get that on. So I'm just going to pinch it slightly in my vise. So to do that, we need to install the needle and seat first. I just want to show you the new needle and seat compared to the old one, what that little civvy looks like. It's completely destroyed. And they're not exactly, exactly the same height, but it doesn't matter. So let's get that in. I... Um, I have a screwdriver that I've modified, especially for carbies like this. The some of the American carbs of needle and seats work the same way, and you need a very broad, blunt screwdriver for that. So I ground this one specially for that. Quadra jet carbs and those work in the same way. Now the Needle for this comes in a three piece. So you've got that little loose spring there. Don't want to drop it. You've got that little loose spring. So the spring is going to go on the pin and that's going to go inside and then that you chuck inside there and make sure it's there. Like that. And then the next we've got to put the little float on. And uh, Get the little pin through. Like that. And then we've got to adjust the float level. We'll do that in a sec. Now this one is actually perfect. We're going to show you like that. The the little float has got to be parallel with that. And you see it is, but it's, if you want to measure it, it's there 18 millimeters. The bottom of it is 18 millimeters from the bottom over there. And then that should be, that should be it. So now we can put everything together. Remember, put the gasket on. 
before you put the float on not like what i've done here because otherwise you have to take it on, out again to do the <laughs> to put the gaskets on anyway stupid mistake i'll put the gasket on quickly i want to get the float bowl in like that And then only now can we put that little cover on because if you do it before the time you're going to struggle to get to that screw so that's why i didn't do it just now anyway i'm not going to record how tight and screws so the next thing you have to do is put the mixture screw back i just want to show you if you compare the two, you see the, the, the thread on the original one is a little further than the thread on the one that came in the kit. I do not know if that's going to make a difference. And it also looks like the, the aftermarket one is a little skinnier than the original one. So what I will do is I'll give this, I'll put in a new one and test it. I'm going to test it on my vehicle eventually um, but I'll give that with the client so that if there's a problem which I don't think it'll be uh, we can we can put the original one back and then very important put a little lubricant in there and make sure that's perfectly clean and remember the rusty old spring that's now very shiny so and there we go whether that thread is going to make a difference i can't tell you that we'll have to test that and with these things usually usually you turn it into the seats and then half one one and a half two two and a half threads out and there it should be close close to correct we still need to put in the idle mixture screw otherwise this vehicle is not gonna not gonna idle and i always turn them in until i can see they they open the butterfly a little bit like that you can see it's moving it over and then Last thing we have to do is to put the banjo bolts on. So on the banjo bolt, um, it comes with special brass gaskets, um, and they give you they give you aluminium ones within the kit. Yeah, they've got a they've got a gasket. It's usually brass. One that goes there, and then the banjo bolt goes on, and one that goes there. Uh, if, but if you don't have, you can just take the original ones and just make them hot. You will anneal them, and then they become soft again. I'm not going to tighten that too much, the client will put it where it's best suited for him. The last thing we have to do, if I'm not mistaken, is put the idle... Uh, um, Dieseling idle screw back, uh, uh, solenoid. I just want to clean it up first. So there's the solenoid. It's got a little o ring on the end, and you get a new one in a kit. I'm just going to pull this one off and uh, put the new one on. I just took that with my nail, just pull it off. And with anything that goes in a hole, 
little bit of lube. You do get a new seal for it. Put the seal on. Screw that in. I do not know if the solenoid works, but I will test it. And then just nip it up with a spanner. So I'm done with the carby, but I just noticed over there, someone nipped the butterfly a bit. And if that's going to have an effect on the idling, I'll have to take that butterfly out and dress it and put it back. But I'm not going to cover that in this video. So there you have it. That's how I fit the kit into this little SJ car. Fortunately, the kits are available. Um, from Kaiser, they are available. Um, but yeah, in the next video, I'll uh, test it on my van before I give it back to the client. The client wanted me to test it. So uh, I'll have to make an adapter to, to test it and run it on my van. I won't take it for a ride just to start and idle and make sure it revs up and everything. But we've tested the accelerator pump, that's fine, it's working. Um, everything else should be fine. Anyway, thanks for watching. Be safe out there.